Well, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may happen to be in AutoCAD land. We are here with another Autodesk Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar. This is the Back to Basics track, and as always, we are here to cover some things that you might want to integrate into your workflows. Uh, it's a very basic, uh, beginner level, uh, entry level sort of topics that we cover today. We are going to be covering uh, layouts and viewports and all things related to plotting and publishing that way. Uh, there's a separate webinar that will cover specifically publish and plotting, but it all ties together. It's all interrelated. So um, we'll go through it here and uh, hopefully you pick something up. Uh, I am Zach. Uh, with me today is Mike. We're going to be dual presenting and uh, Naman is our moderator today. He'll be helping out in the live question and answer sections that you can find within the webinar interface. Uh, before we get started, uh, as, as I mentioned, there is a chat window, there's a questions window. Uh, put your questions in there, we will answer them as we go through, or Naman may just cover them during the course of the webinar presentation and we won't get to them at the end. But uh, we usually try to save a few for the end, we should have a little bit of time. Sessions are always recorded and we put them up on YouTube on our, our webinar section of our Autodesk YouTube channel. And uh, also the links are available here and you should have them in the emails that you got when you signed up as well. You can see them on the screen there. The slide deck here that you're looking at and everything else that we go through today will be available afterwards. Just a note, a few things coming up. Uh, as always, we've got four different tracks that we do throughout the course of the month to bring you different topics about AutoCAD and uh, other products as well sometimes. I would, oh, one programming note I do want to bring to everybody's attention. We are not doing a webinar on the week of July 4th. As you can see there, normally July 7th would be our day to do a webinar that Thursday, but we're not doing it uh, because a lot of people are out and uh, a lot of us are out. So um, to put one on that week just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we're skipping it. So take it off your calendars if it's on your calendar at this point so you don't get that annoying pop-up for no reason at all. Um, so Beyond the Basics coming up, we're going to cover Sheet Set Manager uh, the 14th of July, uh, my wedding anniversary by the way, Bastille Day, happy Bastille Day also. July 3rd, 14th, the uh, Solid Modeling in AutoCAD 2017. And uh, last but not least, Productivity Tips and Tricks Part 2. So you don't want to miss out on that. If you attended the first Tips and Tricks, uh, it was good, very good. And uh, again, all the stuff up on YouTube, so we won't belabor that point any longer. Uh, we're going to present today, and in most of these back to basics, things that are available in both AutoCAD LT and in full AutoCAD. And where there are differences, we'll try to point those things out for you as well. Um, today I'll be presenting in full AutoCAD, so we may see some things that the LT users might not have available, but that's okay. We'll uh, point those out. There's still plenty of things. You're not going to be missing out on a whole lot. So today, this week's agenda, we are covering layouts and viewports. We're going to talk about defining layouts and viewports. What are they? Uh, we're going to talk about how to create them how to modify them, and most of all, how to save yourself some time going forward in your work and your drawings and how to reuse the content going forward so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you go to plot or every time you go to publish something. So at this point, we'll bring in Mike. He's going to cover uh, our outline here of what we're covering today, and then we'll get into it. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. So to start off, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about plotting. So one of the pretty common questions is, what is the difference between printing and plotting? Um, you hear them kind of interchangeably, um, which is product of our day and age. Um, but back in the day, um, printers actually were only able to accommodate text output. So not too high tech. Um, you actually use plotters to you know, do the large format printing and vector graphics, so pictures and stuff. Um, which was why you had that distinction um, back in the day. But today, printers, as we know, do quite a bit with them. You could even 3D print now. So um, that distinction has largely gone away um, within the program, you know, within AutoCAD itself, actually. Plotting is listed 
in the printing section. So there you go. Now you know that they're pretty interchangeable. Um, you can actually plot from you know model space or paper space layouts, uh, which is kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, the one of the first things off the back um, for model space, kind of limited in what you can plot. So you know, you sh most people do their drafting within model space, and then what do you do with it from there? Um, as I mentioned, there's only really one one scale that you can use, um, and then you can make other layouts which come to be known as paper space. And it's pretty cool because you could actually have multiple views and it gives you the flexibility to have multiple scale factors. So next uh, slide, Zach, please. Awesome. So some tools that are associated with plotting. Um, you have layouts, as I mentioned before. You have the plotter manager. You have page setups and plot styles. So this is kind of, you know, small list of what's to come. Um, we're going to be showing you all this in AutoCAD. Um, so, you know, without much delay, I'm going to get right into it. We um, should have a little delay, though. I want to add a little bit of delay in here. A little bit of a delay. Everybody's favorite. Everybody's favorite. We want to do a couple of polls. It is required. Sorry. I know. It's everybody's least favorite time. But we want to throw out a couple of polls uh, just to get a gauge on on the audience and again it helps us to tailor the content so uh, going forward we can make sure that we're presenting stuff that you want to hear, wanted stuff you want to see. Um, so getting a percentage of, of uh, whether or not this is the people's first webinar or if they visited us before as usual uh, looks like the majority is returning customers but we do have some new folks in with us today so welcome thanks for joining us hope you enjoy hope you learned something and uh, we're going to close this one out and quickly just share up the results with everybody. It's overwhelming return customers. So thank you for attending. And uh, if you weren't here, we wouldn't do it. So thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, let's go there. Uh, and also, we want to find out which programs you use. Uh, that as well helps us to tailor the content of these webinars specifically for the folks that are coming to view them and attend them. Uh, looks like we're getting there. Uh, and, and as usual, this one's about the same too, uh, mostly AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, LT, but we do have others using some of the vertical products, architecture and MEP and AutoCAD electrical, civil 3D map. So. That looks pretty good there. Let's close that one out. We're not quite all the way at 100%, but it, it's good enough to get us a, a, a pretty good feel for, for who's here, who's attending. So thank you for that. And then lastly, one specifically that relates to what we're covering today, we want to find out where you plot and publish from. Do you use the model tab exclusively? Uh, I've seen a lot of people do that. and. Uh, and then they scale when they go to the plot dialog, or are you using layouts exclusively, or maybe a mix of both? Um, and there's uh, some folks that maybe your job doesn't involve plotting at all. Maybe you're just reviewing drawings, and maybe making some markups here and then, and sending the drawings back to people, and you're not doing any plotting ever. So that's a perfectly valid uh, answer as well. So it looks like we're over 80% replied on this one. So let's go close this one out, and I'll display the results here and it looks like it's a mix, the majority of mix uh, plotting from layout tabs or using a combination of plotting both from the model and from layout tabs. So that's fantastic to find that information out. Thank you much and we will get back into what we were previously going through. All right and as uh, as Mike said, let's let's see some of the stuff in AutoCAD. I will at this point throw it over to his screen, and he'll take you into the beginning of our presentation. Awesome, thanks, Zach. Alrighty, let me get AutoCAD up. Alrighty, so. 
here I have AutoCAD LT 2017 open. Um, what I'm going to be showing isn't, you know, exclusive to LT. Um, all the features in LT, you'll be able to get it in the regular version of AutoCAD as well as the verticals. Um, so first off, I'm going to be talking a little bit about layouts. So a layout itself represents a drawing sheet. You know, it typically includes a drawing border and title block, one or more layout viewports that display views of your actual model space, um, general notes, labels, and possibly dimensions. Um, they could also include tables, schedules, standards, etc. Um, so usually a drawing file, such as this one, um, they contain a couple layouts, but you can actually have as many layouts as you need. Um, you can actually see the layout tabs down here. Um, the first time you create a layout, what ends up happening is it initializes a default page setup for that layout. Um, there you go. Um, now, for page setups, we're going to touch upon it in a little bit, but just keep that in the back of your head. Um, you know, create a new layout, get that default page set up, and then once the layout is actually initialized, you, know, you can modify, publish, and add it to sheet sets as a sheet. Um, at this point, I want to point out, too, that there is an option. If you go into options real quick, Mike, we can show the folks that. Uh, when you created that new layout, uh, the page setup manager didn't come up. But if you go to the, dis the uh, display tab there, there's a checkbox. And it's at the bottom left. It says, show the page setup manager for new layouts. Now, uh, it's unchecked on Mike's system, but you guys might have it checked. You might take a look in your options and see. And when, when that is checked, anytime you make a new layout, it will automatically take you into the page setup manager so you can configure the page setup for your new layout. But uh, you can always just pop into the page setup manager anytime you want to, even if you have that option disabled. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. Alrighty, so um, differences between model space and paper space. Um, down here I have two paper space layouts, and then you have the model space one. Um, as I had mentioned before, in model space you can really only have you know one scale. Uh, you can think of this one as real world units. Then when you have your paper space, you can kind of include as many. Well, not as many. There is a limit to it. Um, you can include more than one scale. Now, the way that you actually get more scales in there is through the use of viewports. So here's one layout, just a you know, default one. Has a, this is a viewport over here. It's giving me a glimpse into what I have set up in model space. And you could see what the scale is down here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually make this one smaller just to, just to dem demonstrate. Copy this guy over. So now I have you know a layout that has multiple scales associated to it. Um, versus if I was in model space, I would only be able to have one scale. Uh, one of the cool little tips and tricks that actually this one, shout out to Zach for this one. Um, if you press control and click on a tab, lets you copy the you know, layout over. So you'll see layout one, you can click over here, and then you have the same layout, all just by doing you know control, click, and then just drag it. Another way that you can copy the layouts over, you just right click on it, then move or copy. And this gives you the option to create a copy, and then you could kind of put it wherever you want. Um, you could also move around your layout tabs, or you could just you know, drag and drop them. Um, another way that you can you know, create tabs, or create layouts, um, if you have another drawing that has layouts created in it, so here's an example. I have this, you know, this drawing. It has a desized layout over here. I could use the Design Center. It's a tool that doesn't get used too much, or doesn't get used enough, I think. Um, you just type out Autodesk Design Center. And then it defaults to folders. I'm going to go to Open Drawings, and you're going to see that it lists both of the drawings that I currently have open. 
Um, so in the sample floor, floor plan building blocks. Um, so I want to bring over the you know, layout tab from the layouts drawing. I'm going to click in here, go to layouts, double click on D size layouts, and there you go. It actually brought in the layout from the other drawing. Uh, one thing to note, however, is that when you go about it this way, it doesn't actually bring in the page setup that was associated to this layout. Um, it just brings in the layout itself. Um, so a few cool things that you can do with layouts, um, or more specifically viewports within the layouts. Uh, you could actually kind of edit, you know, or actually control what you're going to be displaying. I'm going to exit out of this guy. I'm going to make this layout bigger just to better demonstrate what I'm trying to show. Okay. So I'm going to open up the layer manager. I'm click in here. You could actually, you know, freeze layers within a viewport. Um, so you can edit what is actually going to be displayed when you decide to plot stuff. So um, yeah, as an example, let's see, you see the, if you zoom in, you're going you're to see some furniture in there. Um, I know that this is actually on the iFern layer, just because I put it there. If I double click here and then go to viewport freeze, click there, you're going to see that it disappeared. So that you know, it just was frozen in this specific viewport. So you could actually have, you know, some more control over what you're going to be displaying within your layouts. Uh, one more thing, let's see. Close out of this guy. Now going to, you know, scales um, within the viewports, you can set the scale down here get a list of all the scales that you have. I'm going to set it to this one just for demonstration purposes. Um, one thing that you should be aware of if you double click in the viewport, activate it, and you zoom, you are actually changing the scale of that viewport. Um, if you want to keep it that way or keep it in that scale without having to worry about accidentally editing the scale of the viewport, you can just click on it, then in the properties, lock your display, and then this actually prevents you from, you know, changing that scale. So for now, it seems a little bit silly just because I'm doing it with one viewport, um, but if you have a, you know, layout tab that has a bunch of different viewports in there, that'll definitely help you keep your work organized and you, know, you won't have scaling issues. Um, so on the topic of number of viewports, a little fun fact, there's actually a maximum of 64 viewports that you can have in a layout. Um, so I would hope that you can fit all the information that you need in a layout using those 64 viewports. Um, in addition, there's also a limit on the total number of layout tabs that you can have. So you can have a maximum of 256 layout tabs, and that's including your model space tab. Um, so in actuality, it's 255 paper space layouts. Um, however, as I had mentioned earlier, um, you, you know, most default drawings only have a couple of layouts in addition to that model space layout in there. Um, you don't want to try to cram too many layouts into a drawing. Once you start getting into really high layout counts, um, you will start to notice a performance hit. Um, and in addition, you know, if God forbid you end up getting a corrupt drawing or something happens, um, you can W block stuff that's inside the drawing. So you can, you know, grab your line work and it's a lot easier to recreate one layout versus recreating a bunch of layouts that you could have, you know, created. So, you know, just a few tips and tricks. Um, for dealing with layouts. Um, so next, we're going to talk about the plotter manager, and I'm going to you know throw it on to Zach, and he's going to walk you through all the cool stuff that you could do with the plotter manager. Before you go to plotter manager, can I uh, just uh, 
can you just show people how to just quickly create a viewport and how you change the scale because they're confused as to how that works please oh yeah yeah sure um, so let's see I'm gonna unpause my screen here right, let me start off on one of these guys all right so to actually create a viewport um, gonna gonna be here in model space so once you switch over to a layout tab you're gonna notice up here you're gonna have a you know, new tab up here and you could actually create viewports through here so you can create rectangular viewports and just select there and there's you know, there's a viewport um, the change, you know, to change the scale, you can do it over here. Or there's also an option in the properties. So where is it? Not finding it right away. But oh, standard scale right there. You can change the scale right over here too. Um, as far as other options for creating viewports. And, uh, you can create different shapes for your viewport, so it doesn't have to be the rect rectangular viewport. Yeah, you can create funky shapes. And that should point out that that's something that isn't uh, available to LT, and also the ability to convert existing objects into viewports. So say you wanted a circular viewport, you could draw a circle, and convert the circle into a viewport, which is kind of empty. But, uh, but uh, LT doesn't have all those options, but fear not, if you receive a drawing from somebody who used a full version of AutoCAD and you're an LT user, you'll still be able to interact with those, with those viewports and whatnot, but uh, the, the functionalities aren't as extensive for the viewport creation as they are in the full AutoCAD product. So actually, um it used to not be available, but it looks like in LT 2017 that functionality was at, was added. So I'm working in LT right now. Um, so oh, you guys so have the functionality now, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you could also make circular viewports. Let me create a circle. Then I'm gonna click over here. Actually, let me get rid of this guy. Go right here. I have to beg your all's forgiveness. I, I work more in AutoCAD than in LT. Yeah. So, uh, no, so this, it looks like we did bring in some functionality here. And, and this is, if it's, if it's something that makes it into LT, what that tells us is that it's something that LT users uh, found out about from their uh, full AutoCAD using uh, partners and, and, and requested of us. Uh, typically, that's, that's the way features get into LT from full AutoCAD, so it's a, it's a functionality that obviously a lot of people liked and wanted, so, so there it is. Yep. Um, so yeah, it looks like it, it made its way to LT. Um, so yeah, there you go. There's a you know, few different ways that you can create uh, viewports. Um, you also have you know, some extra options in here. You can name them. Uh, you can clip viewports and the lock and unlock feature that I was showing before so you don't play around with the scales too much, um, you have it here as well. So I hope that kind of clears up some, you know, some of the questions. Um, but you know, if you have any more, feel free to write in the question section. I'll be more than happy to you know, jump in there and help. Zach, one, uh, one, uh, Michael, sorry. Um, one thing that did not show up was the fact that your scale at the bottom uh, for some reason, it's hidden on your screen. Can you just point to that, how you change the scale from the bar? Yeah, sure. Um, so once I actually clicked, you know, double clicked within the viewport and activated it, the scale shows up down here. So the scale of the selected viewport is down here. And just click on it, and it gives you the option to change the viewport, or the scale of that viewport. So I showed it, you know, there's two two ways to do it. You can do it from down here or you can do it from properties and you need to find the, where is it? Um, not, again, not finding it right away, but, but there you go. 
standard scale. You could edit it from here as well. And that looks like it's available once you're in paper space then, right? Yeah, that one looks like you you have to be in paper space to grab. Um, but then when you are actually within the viewport and models in the model space, you could edit the scale from the bottom of the screen. So if you had multiple viewports and you're in paper space, you could just pick a viewport, change its scale, deselect it, pick the next one, change its scale, deselect it, change and so on and so forth until all your scales for your viewports are exactly as you want them. Yep. I'm just going to show that really quick. There you go. So, so there you go, some cool stuff that you can do with viewports and the layouts. Um, so you know, hopefully that answered everybody's questions. And now I'm going to send it on over to Zach. Hooray. So before we go into what I'm covering in this section, one thing I wanted to cover uh, real quick before we do that, and uh, let me get the right screen showing here for you. There we are. And I'll wait till that appears for everybody. There we go. Okay. So um, to expand upon what Mike was just talking about here, let's make a viewport. So MV is a command you can do uh, to quickly make a new viewport. Um, let's say you're you're inside a viewport and you've zoomed way in, and you to preserve the scale you have you know locked your uh, viewport display locked you display lock the thing so that you can't accidentally be in model space within the viewport and and accidentally mess up your scale because you know if if scale is important to you and say you're at eighth inch equals a foot or whatever and you need to uh, zoom in. You notice here, that even though I'm in model space, and we can tell that by the fact that the button on the bottom says model, um, it, I, it doesn't zoom in. It zooms the whole paper because my viewport is locked. And you see that down here at the command line. It tells us that it's switching back and forth between paper space and model space for the purposes of doing the zoom. Uh, a lot of times we get the complaint, why does it do that? Why does it you know, tell me that so many times? And if you look at the... At the uh, the text window here, this is an expansion of your command line. Anytime you do a zoom uh, with the wheel now on your mouse, it'll, it'll give you that degree if, if you've got your viewport locked. Uh, so that's a normal behavior. Don't worry about it. Spitting out all those messages there. It's just being over-informative, if anything, of what you're doing. Now, let's say you were zoomed in this far in your locked viewport, and you forget where you are in relationship to the other objects in the viewport, uh, you may want to uh, see the whole thing to figure out what you were doing. Now, you could go back to the model tab, but you don't necessarily have to. What you can also do is there is a button down here, which is to maximize the viewport. And within the maximized viewport, even though your viewport is locked, you can zoom out, pan around, do all the things that would normally mess up your viewport scale, but you can do it here within the context of the maximized viewport without affecting the scale of your viewport. And then when you exit out here, minimize the viewport, you're back looking at the viewport again, and the display is still locked. Your scale is still whatever you set it for previously. So that's a neat tool. Uh, you can also get into maximized viewport by simply double-clicking from paper space the border of your viewport will also take you into the maximized viewport environment. So that's a good one to know. So let's get into uh, the, the topic I'm going to cover here right now is the plotter manager, uh, location of where your PC3 files are and other related files, and uh, what PC3 files are. So to get into the plotter manager, we can do it a couple different ways. Uh, the easiest way is, if you're unfamiliar with the command line, you can just do this. You can go to the application menu and go to Manage Plotters. And Manage Plotters doesn't do anything except for bring up your uh, directory that houses all of your plotter-related files. So you've got your plot style tables in here, you've got your PMP files in here, and mainly outside here we've got all the PC3 files. Now what you see here are the ones that ship with the program, but you can, of course, add your own create your own PC3 files 
to these. And you do that using the add a plotter wizard. So let's run through that real quick. A lot of people have questions about the, the PC3 wizard, add a plotter wizard, what is it, what does it do? So uh, as you can see here, it gives you uh, a way to configure existing Windows system plotters or non Windows system plotters, and by non-Windows system plotters, what they mean are Heidi drivers. Uh, back in the day, uh, you had to get special AutoCAD drivers, Heidi drivers, they call them because the HDI extension, um, and you had to get them for AutoCAD from the manufacturers like HP or KIPP or whoever the manufacturer of your device happened to be. And in that case, you would bypass the Windows printing subsystem and you'd be sending the job directly from AutoCAD to the plotter device via this special driver that they made just for AutoCAD. Now, it, with the 2000 release of AutoCAD, we did away with all that foolishness and said, look, we can print to any device that you've got installed in Windows. And that is what system printers are here, or Windows system plotters, as it's specified here. So if we go through this, now if you leave it on my computer, it talks about, as you see here, the high D plotter driver. And this is not for printers that you've got installed in Windows. For printers, devices that you have installed in Windows, that you want to go with the system printer option here. And it'll, you know, the little blurb down here tells you exactly what it is. It's for Windows system printer drivers. Now, you may want to apply different default values for now this is AutoCAD Electrical, but never mind. It, it could be any version of AutoCAD you happen to have there. It just happens to say Electrical there, so don't be thrown. Um, so while your, your regular Windows programs can use their own defaults, whatever the Windows defaults are for the printers, you can actually specify your own special default settings for your printers just for AutoCAD usage, and that's what PC3 files are all about. So I'm going to go ahead and pick, uh, let's see, how about the... Oh, uh, DesignJet T2500. Uh, looks like it's redirected from another machine. How about the DesignJet 500? Okay, I've got that driver installed on my local machine here. And I can call it whatever I want to call it. We'll just leave the default name. Now I can edit the plotter configuration right here, or I can do it after the fact by just double-clicking on the PC3 file it's going to create. And the things that are, are nifty about the PC3 files is you can set up things like, if we go into the graphics section, you can set things like uh, either send the true type text as text or as graphics. Of course, if you're going to a piece of paper, it doesn't really make any difference. What does make a difference, the merge control, lines overwrite or lines merge, that makes a difference as to where you've got transparent objects, objects you can see through. Uh, there's more on that, but we won't get into too much detail on it, but just suffice to know that there are differences there. So you may want to configure your PC3 files to do those things. Uh, also, for your standard paper sizes, that come with the printer device. You can modify your margins and various other settings and save them in here. And if you share these PC3 files without your whole organization, uh, throughout your organization, everybody can use the same settings and you won't have a bunch of different margins and different paper sizes between all of your different workstations. So that's a handy way to standardize all of that by using PC3 files. But for now, we're gonna cancel out of here. Um, oh, also I should point out that you can get into if you go custom properties, it's just going to bring up the properties of your the regular Windows properties dialog. But if you make the changes here, they're only going to be affecting your AutoCAD jobs. So you can change everything here about the Windows printer driver, but it only is for the purposes of when you're in AutoCAD. Oh, um, before I go too far, also calibrate plotter much underused, usually not necessary, but it's good to know it's here if you do need it. Say you're plotting the scale and your 11 inch line comes out to be 10 inches and 3 quarters. It means you've got a calibration issue. You need to calibrate. If, if putting the ruler on the paper is important to you, calibration is key. And the calibration wizard here, I won't go into it, but suffice to say that through a couple of trial and error, and it'll print out a sample rectangle and you measure it and you say how much exactly that it measured. and It'll adjust so that when the time you're done, your PC3 file will be specifically adjusted for the size that you calibrate to so that your plots will come out right on the money. So what did it do? It made a PC3 file in here that I can use for plotting. 
from this point forward. And I can configure custom settings within the driver uh, that won't affect other Windows programs. It'll only affect the jobs that I send from AutoCAD. Now, when you go to plot from AutoCAD, um, and I'll just show you the, the PC3 editor, it, it takes you into the same settings that we just could have configured while we were making it. Here's how you do it after the fact. So you don't have to do it up front if you don't want to. So what does this mean for us in AutoCAD? So if I go to plot from AutoCAD now, in addition to having the HP DesignJet 500 here, which is the system printer, and we can tell that because it doesn't say .pc3 at the end, that's just the regular Windows system printer driver with all of its defaults. Now if I want to use the one that I just made, which may have some other special configurations, I'll pick this. And you note that it says .pc3 at the end. And if I want to edit that PC3 file, I just go into the properties, brings me back here again. This should look familiar from the last few screens. And that's your PC3s. Now, um, PC3s are often used from version to version to version so that you don't have to redefine them every time and all of your custom margins and paper sizes. So um, your CAD manager probably has a repository of these PC3 files on the network and whenever you migrate to the newest version they just point you out there. And when I say point you out there, what I mean is they go into the profile options and for your printer support file paths and your printer configuration search path is this. And this here, the printer configurations, which are PC3s, this is the path where the PC3s live. Uh, in the recent versions, you can have more than one path for each of these sections. So if you happen to have a local set of PC3s and then a company standard set of PC3s, you might have two paths for your configuration search path. And that's perfectly normal, perfectly fine. So that's PC3s, how to use them, why you would want to use them, and uh, more to explore going forward. But at this point, I'll throw it back to Mike. We will cover our next topic. Let me just change over to him real quick here, and he will take it away. Cool. Alrighty. Make sure that's cool. Show my screen. Perfect. Um, so, next thing that we're going to cover is page setup. Um, so, as you know, I had talked about it a little bit before with layouts. Um, when you actually create a new layout, um, you have the option of, you know, specifying a page setup for it. Um, I left the option toggled on before um, through the options display and then the show page setup manager for new layouts. Kind of show you what that looks like. Once you actually select the layout tab, you get the page setup manager. So what is a page setup? Um, it you know lets you spec uh, specify a plotter, um, lets you specify settings such as paper size and orientation. Um, these settings, so these page setup settings are saved within the actual drawing and you can actually associate each different layout to a different page setup. So you don't have to use one page setup for every single one of your layouts. You could you know, change it up a little bit. Um, if theoretically you could set it up to plot to different plotters, um, but it's you know, useful to help you play around with this paper sp uh, setting. And, um, yeah, you could, I'll show you actually what the page setup actually looks like. Um, so let me go in here and create a new a new page setup. I'm going to just call this one demo. So Zach had you know, shown this before a little bit um, with the PC3 files. Uh, so I'm not going to use one of these. I'm just going to use, actually I am going to use one of the PC3s. I'm going to use a DWG to PDF PC3 just as a just an, as an example. Um, once you're actually in here, um, you can see that it gives you some options. You can play around with the paper size. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the paper sizes are listed twice. Um, all this has to do is with the way that your your plotter 
recognizes the size of the paper, um, you'll notice that they're just flipped. So this is 250 by 176 millimeters. And that's just the reverse, 176 by 250 millimeters. So you, know, you can play around with paper size, um, plot area. You can select what you're going to be plotting. Um, so you can select display, and what that'll do is it'll plot what you're actually seeing on the screen. Um, this one actually doesn't have extents. Let me switch. Oh, oh no, sorry. Um, there's sometimes another option called extents. It um, usually will let you plot to the extents of what is being shown on the page. Let me get out of here so I could get that option to come up. Page setup manager, modify. There you go. So. There you go. You can see the extents over here. Um, so as I mentioned, extents plots what the like the most the outermost um, objects are. So it's kind of like when you, you know, zoom extent in model space, it'll zoom out and print. It'll it will zoom out and try to contain everything within the window. This is kind of the same except for plotting. Um, you could select layout, and it'll plot whatever is in that layout. Um, or you could also set window. So let me show you what that looks like. You select window, you actually get to select what you're going to plot. Let me show that again right here. And you see over here, it kind of shows I didn't select the entire, um, the entire um, drawing. I just selected a little portion of it. It's shown up here. And since you're not um, fitting to paper, it's going to be smaller than the piece of paper, right? Exactly. I mean, I could fit it to paper, but not going to do that one. Yeah. yeah, I'll throw it all off. You can see it over here. Um, but let me switch to you know, layout over here. Um, you have the option to offset your, your plot. Um, this will actually be pretty useful if you're trying to bind plans together. So uh, it's great. It looks great on the, on the screen. When you're actually punching holes, when you want to submit some drawings, it's useful to be able to move your plot ever so slightly to the right, so you could have the space and not you know, punch a hole through your drawing. Um, so, as Zach mentioned, you have the fit to paper option right over here. So, you know, if you let's say going to select this, just this. Let me try that again. You can select foot to paper, but again, that will throw off the, the scale that you have set up. Um, also, if you, if you know, for example, that the size of your paper is going to be 11 by 17, and you have this set up, the page, the paper size to 22, by 34, you can select fit to paper, and you'll know that it'll, you know, kind of scale down. Um, it'll sm uh, smush it all onto the piece of the paper that you're plotting to. Um, you have some additional settings over here for drawing orientation. So you could select portrait, landscape. Uh, if you want to plot upside down, have some additional options over here for plotting options. Uh, so you can plot object line weights. You can select to not do that. So it'll just default to the normal line weight. Everything will just plot in the same line weight. Um, select if you want to plot transparencies or not. Um, plot styles, which you could assign up here. Um, plot styles we're actually going to go over in, in a little bit, so I'm not going to dive into that too much. Um, the option to plot paper space last. So this will actually, when you when you see last, you think uh, last in the back. No, so this will actually plot it so that everything in paper space is coming to the front. Um, so if you have something that is in you know, paper space um, on top of that viewport, it'll plot. It'll plot on top of the viewport. It won't be plotted behind it. Um, you could also select to hide paper space objects. So you can select to you know just not. If you have a border in there, just hide it. You have that option. Um, you also have the option to you know, share your viewports, select the quality that you want. Um, and you also have you know, that plot style table. You can assign a plot style table 
which Zach is going to be going over in a little bit. Um, so yeah, let's say that you have you know a page set up. That's the one that we were just. Well, that's one of the ones that I created. Um, you could actually set that page setup to as many of the layouts as you want. Um, you can also import the page setup from another drawing. So I'm going to show you kind of how to do that. Just click over here, import. I'm going to select layouts over here. So just because I know that there is a page setup in there that I want. And all the page setups that are in the drawing that you selected are going to be shown here. So you can just select it, press OK, and then it'll show up. So why would you do this? Um, it, it saves you time if you, instead of having to go in and manually edit your page setup for every single plot that you're going to do, you can just have you know, one page setup, you common ones that you use, you know, set your layouts with that particular page setup and not have to go in and manually edit your settings every single time that you want to plot something. Um, so yeah, that's that's about all there is to page setups. Um, what I'm going to do is I mentioned that there was this plot style and plot style table um, portion of the page setup, and Zach is going to you know, dive into that and give you guys a pretty good overview of what you can do with plot styles and the plot style table. Indeed, plot styles are uh, something that people agonize over and struggle with, but they're really, um, they're really something that are useful, absolutely. And uh, we'll get into that here. So uh, if everybody can see my screen there, I have a layout and I have a viewport that is set to a view that shows some objects in color. Now, um, through the use of page setups, what I can do is I can, um, there, there are various things I can do. Um, let me get out of here. I'm just going to plot this one here. And now, the plot dialog, the page setup dialog, they look very similar. They have a lot of the same options. Um, let's do page setup since that's what we're covering here. So I'm going to edit my page setup here. So let's say I wanted everything to be black, and that is a very common thing that people want to do. And to do that, we ship, by default, a CTB, a color-dependent plot style table, called monochrome. And what it does, I'll take a look, we'll take a look at the settings here, is the, here's the plot style table editor. So what you get with the plot style table editor is a listing of all 255 colors and what they're going to do when they plot. So, as you notice, if I click through any of these colors over here, you'll see on the right-hand side the color is set for black. So that means, just like Henry Ford said, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. And that's exactly what the monochrome CTB file does for you. To compare that to a different one that isn't set that way, we'll take a look at the, the ACAD CTB. We'll look at its properties real quick here. And by contrast, each color is set to use the object color. So whatever color the object is in the drawing, that's the color it's going to come out. So you're not doing any kind of an override here. Uh, in fact, the ACAD CTB is a pretty much a WYSIWYG uh, CTB file. There isn't a whole lot that's different from what you would get if you weren't using any plot style at all. Now one thing that's kind of nifty here that you can do is you can display the plot style. And as you see in the tooltip there, it controls whether the effects of the plot style assigned are, are displayed on your screen within AutoCAD. Now, if you leave it unchecked, okay, let's leave it unchecked and we'll say okay, and we'll close this. Now, if we go to plot, or actually let's just do a preview, everything's black. The monochrome plot style table is applied, everything turned black, and that's the way it would look if we went ahead and plotted this. Now, what you can also do though within the page setup manager is that checkbox that will display the plot styles in AutoCAD. So hit OK, hit Close. Sometimes you have to do a regen, sometimes it does it for you. But as you can see there, it now displays the effects of the plot style table that I applied to the viewport. And it displays it within the program. So I can you know, go in and, and I can zoom in and I can do some work here. 
and everything looks black because the plot style table is being applied as I work in real time. It's not an option I see a lot of people using, but it's pretty nifty all the same. Um, now we mentioned color dependent plot styles. Color dependent plot styles are CTBs far and away from what we see here, they're the most commonly used type of plot style tables and it simply means that if a color is whatever, then it will come out with X properties based on what you've set up in the plot style table. So as we said here, this monochrome one, all the colors are black. But there are other properties other than just color. Uh, you might have line weights that you want to apply. You might have line types that you want to apply. So uh, for example, say I think I think the furniture layer used color. Let's do region here. Uh, actually, I didn't take my. Uh, and you can typo these things like crazy now. The spell check's really good. Haha. <laughs> Don't have to be as precise anymore. There we go. Let's uncheck that. So let's okay that. Let's close that. Okay. So this stuff that's on the the CPU layer. Let's look at that here. So the CPU layer is using color, what is that color? Is it just magenta? I think it is. Yeah, magenta, good. Okay, so it's one of the default colors. So if we go into, ah, darn it, I typoed it too much if I wanted. There we are. If we modify the plot style table to say color six, which is magenta, let's say I don't want it to come out black. Let's say I want it to come out yellow or green. That's a little easier to see on a white background. And let's say I wanted to use a different object, a different line type than the, what the object has. So let's say I want it to be a, a dashed line instead. So let's save and close the changes to my monochrome CTB, which I never recommend doing. That's a key here. Don't do what I'm about to do. Always use save as. In fact, I'm going to do a best practice here. I'm going to save as. I'm not going to overwrite the changes in the monochrome CTB. I'm going to make a save as. I'm going to say uh, dashed green for magenta. How about that? That way I'll know what I'm doing. Okay, let's get out of here and let's reset to my new CTB that I just made called dash green for magenta and let's display that and see what it looks like. So here you can see we have dashed green lines for anything whose color was magenta. So as you can think about this, extrapolate this out, this could become really, really a powerful tool and you could spend days working on making your plot style tables, but oh, by and large companies already have them set up the way they want them for particular layers and particular colors and particular line types. So um, just like we saw with the uh, configuration, the PC3 files, oftentimes companies will have the printer support file paths set up to go to the plot style table folder on the network that everybody shares the same plot styles. Or, again, you might maintain a local folder that has plot styles that you've made, that you've configured, that you've made changes to, but then there's one that's on the network that everybody uses, that nobody changes, and those are the company standards. So you might have two paths in here or more for the, the plot style table search path. And if you ever want to see where that path is, you can get to it quickly just by going into the print menu off here and go into, uh, where is it, uh, ta -da, it's probably down here, manage plot styles, here we are. And it takes you to the folder where the CTB files live. And as you can see in the path here, it's just one deeper than the plotters folder. Now the other option for plot styles, and I won't dive into it too much because we're running out of time and they're not as commonly used, are STBs or named plot styles. And named plot styles, uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more laser level control, and it's more than just, okay, the object is this color, it's going to plot out like this. You can specify that individual objects, individual layers, individual you know, various elements are assigned a different plot style. And that's the thing with CTBs, you can assign one plot style table to the whole drawing when you plot. With STBs, you can assign different plot styles to different objects within the drawing, which gives you much greater level of control. But 
with a much greater level of control it brings in much more complexity and you could probably drive yourself crazy that way. And uh, I've seen a lot of people get into that rut. So uh, STBs, they're powerful. They give you a lot of control, but use them with caution and, uh, and you'll be happy. <laughs> So plot style tables, they're a very powerful tool, and uh, if you don't know about them, get into the plot style table editor, uh, monkey around, as make your own new plot style tables, don't save over the default ones because you want the default monochrome, you want the default ACAD one to be used as template for new plot style tables that you make. Uh, try not to save over them, but if you do save over them, you can always retrieve uh, a copy from the default folder and the user data cache folder. I'll see if I can throw that up in the description here of the uh, of the uh, video, possibly, and and so there's a link to that. So that's plot style tables, very powerful tool. Use them, go forth, be happy. So we've got a few minutes left for question and answer. So let's go into the questions panel here and see how we're doing. Looks like there have been quite a few questions during all this. I don't know what that means. Maybe we're not doing a very good job of explaining ourselves, but we'll see. No, there has been a lot of questions, uh, but I would say if you can cover annotation uh, a scale versus the standard scale and uh, how that affects in the viewport. I, sure. I know it's a very loaded question. It, because it a, is. It is, absolutely. You're right. Um, I can touch on it briefly, though. I'll try. Uh, annotation scaling is something that we brought in with the 2008 release of AutoCAD, and annotation objects uh, are things like your M leaders and your dimensions and uh, blocks can be annotative as well. Uh, it was an attempt to counter the idea that you had to have a billion different or five or six or eight different dimension styles and text styles for each drawing for the different viewport scales you might have. So um, let me see if I can whip together a quick demonstration here. I, I don't know that I can, but we'll try it. So M text, I'm going to make a, a quick object here, and this is going to be here is some um, M text. Pretty hey exciting. Zach, I think you're going to run out of time on this one. You think so? Well, yeah, like you're step. probably right. You're probably right. You're probably right. So it's annotative scaling is a, and it just like just like plot style tables, annotative uh, scaling is a, is a powerful tool. It's something that can save you a lot of work and time in the future. It does take a bit of getting used to and you take some setup initially. So creating your templates and your company standards files uh, and all the different scales that you're going to use for your viewports. But once you've got your templates all configured that way, it really saves you time on the other end. So the longer you use them, the more time you save from having to do it in each drawing. So one thing I just want to point out, um, uh, we have a link uh, to our prior uh, YouTube webinars, and there are some webinars that cover uh, those topics, and somebody had asked about Sheet Set Manager, a couple other things that have been covered in the past as well, so they may want to take a look at those as well. Right, batch plotting I also see there in the question there, thanks Dan. Uh, batch plotting, publishing, Batch plotting and publishing, same thing. Type in publish, you get batch plot dialog. Or if you hover over the button that says batch plot now in the ribbon, if you hover over it, you'll notice the pop-up says publish is the command you're executing. Uh, so it's the same thing. Um, and, and you're right, Naman, there are definitely are other webinars that cover those and uh, in much, much greater detail than we have time for today. Uh, one last poll I'm going to throw out there, as we always do, is the ever popular, did you learn something new in today's session? So we'll launch that out, get some results, and we'll call it a day. Thanks, as always, for joining us, everybody. Again, you're the reason we do these things, just to uh, expose you to some, maybe some new features that you weren't aware of or some new ways to do things that you weren't aware of. No substitute for training. I'd like to reiterate that. We're, we don't mean to be trainers here or, or be teaching CAD standards because that's not our goal. Our goal is just to expose you to some parts of the program because it is such a deep program with so many various facets and commands and levels of complexity that it'll make your head explode. So we want to try to expose you to some of these things you might not have ventured into and, and see if you can work them into your workflows because that's the ultimate goal is using this as a productivity tool to get work done. So let's close out this poll, and I'll share it real quick. Looks like 
The vast majority learned something new today, and that's good. That means we're doing something right. So thank you very much, as always, for attending. And uh, everything will be up on YouTube. Hopefully you join us next time. Uh, our next Back to Basics webinar will be next month. But uh, in, as in the uh, initial slides here, we saw every Thursday, except for July 4th week, we do have webinars going on every Thursday. So hope you join us, and have a great day.